Hello everyone and welcome to Shonen Rundown. I'm your host Hayden. And I'm Nathaniel. We have lots to talk about today in this episode. We'll start by discussing Studio Mappa and their notable projects, and later we'll discuss some upcoming series. Studio Mappa is currently leading the animation scene, and it's easy to see why. Their team of animators have produced some of the most popular anime in the world, from long-running Attack on Titan to the newest anime hit, Jujutsu Kaisen. Mmm, Jujutsu Kaisen is really good. But why does Studio Mappa seem to attract the biggest franchises? A big reason why popular manga series choose Studio Mappa over other studios is because they have proven time and time again that they are willing to adapt and try new things. Every series has different needs, making innovative studios like MAPPA the best choice for manga with unique visuals. Mm -hmm. Then I guess it makes sense that the series like Attack on Titan will get picked up by them. That makes sense. Um, what about Attack on Titan makes it special from like other shows? The overall appeal of the visuals, I feel like. Because mm -hmm. compare it to everything that was airing at the time, uh, Attack on Titan just hit the mark with how fluent the animation is. Because mm -hmm. uh, I can remember when it came out, a lot of animes at the time had like very, like a lot of varying quality in like the animation department. Mm -hmm. From like kind of how janky some of the characters' movements were, and like how stiff some of the poses were. Yeah. The um, art I thought was really good, but the more important part for me was the story. Mm -hmm. Like, in the beginning, it builds up like a world with like a small town surrounded by walls with like a bunch of interesting characters. And then, spoiler warning, but when you see some of those characters go and like you feel something, you know that you had a connection to them. And I feel mm -hmm. like if I can have a connection to those characters, then it makes the story that much better. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, pointless like like writing out different characters you know like it's important to keep a sense of attachment with your characters and your audience mm -hmm. from a narrative standpoint yeah like fan favorites like mika said like aaron yeager it's interesting although the conclusion of attack on titan set a high expectation for mappa's future works their latest success jujutsu kaisen did not disappoint What do you have to say about Jujutsu Kaisen? Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, I feel like Jujutsu Kaisen, compared to like everything else, oh, shit. mainstream appeal is largely to its anime adaptation, showing once more that, Ma that MAPPA knows how to elevate a manga through stunning animation. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you think the animation in the first season was better than the second one? Um, in some regards, yes. I'm not on the second season yet, but from what I've seen uh, from some of the like special effects, I do like the appeal of the special effects in season one better mm -hmm. than uh, season two. But in terms of like overall uh, character animation, I feel like season two, like takes it in that regard with yeah. how stunning everyone's movements are. Yeah, season two, it's like just everything was somehow made better. Like season one wasn't bad, but compared to season two, it's like they set a whole new expectation for the studio. And I'm kind of wondering how they're gonna like keep on improving it. So far, every episode has been better than the last. So I'm like, you know what? I don't know how it can get better. I hope it doesn't get worse either. Yeah, that, 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 that wouldn't be good. Yeah, how do you feel about the story? The story, it's definitely different from a lot of other series nowadays in Shonen Jump. Mm -hmm. Um, what's your favorite character, actually? I'm gonna say Gojo's my favorite. Gojo? Yeah. <laughs> Have, <laughs> why? I don't know, I just like his personality. His personality? Yeah. Like his nonchalant, I don't really care because I'm like the strongest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen is pretty cool, but like some of the other shows here have like really good, but they're not as new. I don't know. I really like it. Those are just our opinions. But what are yours? We asked some of our fellow classmates on their favorite anime. Shonen Rundown is brought to you by the sponsor of today's episode, Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll is a free anime streaming service known for its over a thousand shows. From Jujutsu Kaisen to Trigun, Crunchyroll features anime both new and old. In fact, each anime mentioned on this episode is available to stream on Crunchyroll. And with promo code RUNDOWN, you'll be able to get an entire month of Crunchyroll Premium, which features no ads and access to new episodes only an hour after they're aired in Japan. So why wait? Find it on the App Store or go to Crunchyroll.com to start your one month free trial of Crunchyroll Premium today. Thank you again to Crunchyroll for sponsoring today's episode of Shonen Rundown. Now back to the show. What's your favorite anime? What's your favorite anime? What's your favorite anime? Ensemble Stars. My favorite anime is Dr. Stone. Promise to Neverland. My favorite anime would have to be Jujutsu Kaisen. Dragon Ball Z. Why? I grew up with it. It's always been one of my favorite animes. I like the characters. It's the most science-based and realistic one. Because it's like mysterious and it's dark. It's got a really good storyline and plot to it. Uh, the art is also very enjoyable. And where can you watch it? Crunchyroll. I watch it on Crunchyroll. Netflix. You can find it on any mainstream anime watching site. And where can you watch Dragon Ball Z? On the TV. What's your favorite anime? What's your favorite anime? What's your favorite anime? Our news roundup. We have an upcoming anime that you might want to put on your radar. It's called Kaiju Number 8, a story about a man who gains the ability to turn into a kaiju. He also joins an organization called the Defense Corps, fulfilling his lifelong dream using his newfound power. But as with most shonen series, there's a small twist. What's the twist? The Defense Corps' mission is to fight against Kaiju, meaning that if Kafka's powers are discovered, he himself will be eliminated. That sounds like quite an interesting plot, even though I was interested already. Do you think it will translate into a good anime, though? MAPPA has a strong track record thus far, but until the, show's, the show airs, we'll just have to wait and see. The first episode of Kaiju Number 8 is expected to release in April of next year. The Game Awards have brought us many announcements for upcoming games. However, one stood above the rest, that being the announcement of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. I've heard of other Dragon Ball games, but what is Sparking Zero? Sparking Zero is the long-awaited sequel to the Budokai Tenkaichi games, the older fans of Dragon Ball grew up with. So you can imagine the amount of hype and anticipation surrounding this upcoming game. Mm. With all the hype, Surrounding the game, what do fans have to look forward to with Sparking Zero's release? Well, for starters, the Tenkaichi games are known for their massive roster of characters, mm -hmm. spanning not just the main cast, but random characters from like filler episodes, uh, movies, stuff like that. Like the manga too? Mm. I don't know if they'll do the manga for this one. I'm hoping they do. I'm hoping, I yeah. think everyone is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember, the third one had like over 150 something characters, and that's like without characters who have other transformations on top of them. Nice. So probably even more. Okay. On top of that, the, okay. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is expected to release on PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC sometime in 2024. Nice. Let's hope that Bandai will be able to deliver on such a highly anticipated game. But with all of that being said, we're out of time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Shonen Rundown and tune into our show in the future. I've been your host, Hayden. And I've been Nathaniel, your other host. We'll see you next time. Thank you.